I recently purchased four of these thermoelectric coolers. They are the same thing as a thermoelectric generator, except for that these are built uh, geared more towards being a cooler than a generator. So you could use this to generate electricity also, but it wouldn't make it would be terribly inefficient. So basically, this is how it works. You put power through it. It make, it pumps heat from one side to the other. So like this side would get really cold, and this side would get really hot. And that works really nice. If you were to put like a flame on one side and heat up one side and the other side was cold, it would generate electricity. Not very much, but oh well. Each one of these cost me about $7. And here's the code on them. TES112703. Don't know if you can see that too well. TE means thermoelectric. S means small because it's the die size. 1 means it only has one um, phase or whatever. Meaning, like, if this was as one bundle, that would be two, because it, it would pump it through two phases, or stage, stages, that's what it is. Then 127, I think that's the resistance or something like that, then 03, that's the amperage rating. So this is made for, to pull three amps, and it pulls three, amp, three amps at about 12 volts. Whenever you're using one of these, you have to keep it cool, otherwise it'll melt. So, what I'm going to use is a, is a uh, heat sink unit with the fans from my laptop. Unfortunately, when I was messing around with the filter coolers, I fried one of the fans. So only one of the fan works. But, let's take the voltage up to 5 volts, and you can see the, the fan that isn't too bad is still working, so it's still somewhat useful. It's only, it's only made for 5 volts, so I was trying to run it off 6, 16 volts. But anyway, let's hook up one of these to there, and hook the thermostat on, and or thermometer on, and uh, see how cold it gets. So I have the fan and the thermoelectric cooler running in parallel to the DC power supply. And I have the thermocouple to my thermostat, or thermometer, just being held down by this aluminium brick. Let's turn on the voltage. You see the voltage is already, uh, the temperature is already going down. With 3.3 volts input and drawing 7, uh, 0.78 amps, that's counting the fan too, it hovers at around 55 degrees, which that's mm, 23 degrees below the ambient 78 degrees in my room. Going up to 5 volts makes it pull 1.2 amps and it hovers around 50, volt, uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry, I'm getting my variables mixed up. We are now running two stages on top of each other, so it's having two of them going at once. It is at 3.3 volts, pulling 1.52 amps, and it's hovering at 46.3 degrees Fahrenheit. That is actually 9 degrees lower than it was with one stage. Two stages at 5 volts, pulling 2.32 amps, it hovers at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, so that dropped it by 10 degrees. Well, 9.9 .9 degrees, but yeah, 10 degrees, whatever. I have reshuffled the wiring, so it's four stages, but the fan is no longer powered by the DC power supply. It'll be powered by a stable 5-volt power supply. And unfortunately, in order to have the power supply put out 5 volts, I had to put a load on it, so I have a hard drive going. 5 volts. The fan's going, but the Peltier coolers are not going. It's reading 78.7 volts. Now we'll bring the voltage up to... 3.3 volts on the Peltier coolers. So, before the tests, uh, the previous tests, whenever the Peltier coolers were at were at 3.3 volts, the fans were also running at 3.3 volts. But now the fans are running at 5 volts, so it should give more cooling. I was running into that issue. Four thermoelectric coolers running at 3.3 volts, uh, pulling 2.87 amps, drop the voltage down, uh, drop the temperature down to 40.9 degrees Fahrenheit. That is five degrees below only that what the two coolers could achieve. Four stages running at five volts, unfortunately, is, is pumping and putting too much heat into the heat sink to where the fan, uh, the single fan, can't handle it. So the voltage went down to 36 degrees. Now it's going back up to 40. I'll better turn it off. Seems like I'll, be, I'll need a better cooling method to put the voltage down. Unfortunately, this design has reached the height of its effectiveness, because, you see, every one of these Peltier coolers, or thermoelectric coolers, generates heat. So, let's say it, pull, it lowers one side by 10 degrees, but it raises the other side by 15 degrees.
because some of the, uh, the, the extra five degrees is what's generated by the act of using electricity to move the heat. So that means the ones at the top, they're working pretty efficiently, but whenever you get down to the ones at the bottom, they're using a, a good majority of their energy just to get, uh, wick away the heat that the first three of them made. So right now, the main roadblock of this is that the heat generation from this builds up and cascades, causing the temperature to go down, but then whenever the thermal capacity is reached of the heat sink, it goes back up, up as it heats the system up due to it not being able to cool it on both sides. So the next step for me is to find a better heat sink, probably from a, uh, uh, some old high-end computer that I have.